Good morning, Eric. Okay, good morning, Winnie. How are you? Oh my God, just great. I was so excited. I couldn't even sleep much uh, last night because I'm so excited that we're going to do this today Happy with year. you. Yes. And I mean, I, it's been how many years since I met you? Like, Oh man, it's been like maybe three or four. Yeah, right. right? Yeah, I think it's either three or four. Yes. And it just, you had, I remember like you coming up to my booth and you had this super cool like vibe, like super rhythm <laughs> and you're just so tall. And I was just like, hi, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. I love it. And you know what? Um, I'm so excited to talk to you because you are, you have one of the masterminds, like one of the be most beautiful brains I met in child nutrition. And you have so many ways to like make programs work better and like all these progressive ideas uh, and your crazy passion for kids. So I wanted to share you with everybody and find out what your story, like how did you get started um, in child nutrition? So tell us. Well, uh, I'm a chef uh, by trade. So I went to culinary school and learned how to cook, um, started transitioning into more of the front of the house. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I moved to San Diego, I was working at a restaurant as an assistant manager called Pat and Oscars. Okay. And while I was uh, on shift one night, I had a really difficult customer. And I was able to get that customer satisfied. Well, the guest that was right behind that customer was Gary Patel from San Diego Unified. Okay. And, yeah, it was really cool. And Gary gave me his card and told uh -huh. me he would like for me to come and work for him at San Diego Unified. And it took maybe about almost eight months or nine months of going through the whole interview process uh -huh. uh, before I was actually able to work with uh, Gary. So he's the person who actually helped me come into school nutrition. So, you know, it's, it's really cool. Uh, so that's how I got started. Wait, and how long ago was this? Oh, God, this has got to be 15 years now, 15, what? 16 years. Yes. <gasps> OMG. So and a couple like, of stops in between that. A uh, couple stops, yeah? Yeah, yes. So I, I worked at San Diego Unified for almost four years. Uh -huh. um, I left San Diego Unified to go back to a company I used to work for oh, okay. uh, called Sodexo. Oh, and Sodexo, so I was in, yeah. I was in, yeah, food service management. Mm -hmm. And I was a director at, um, at what they called us general managers mm -hmm. uh, at uh, San Ysidro School District. Oh, yeah, San Ysidro. Yeah, and so... I left San Ysidro School District uh, to come to, to Sweetwater. So that's oh, how, I, yes. uh, yeah, how I'm at Sweetwater. That's how I know you is for Sweetwater. Yeah. Uh, so how many years now with Sweetwater? I think it's nine. I think, yeah, I think it's nine. It'll be nine in March. Yeah. I can't even do the math. I mean, you've been in child nutrition all these years. Yeah. And like, I know, I mean, you're all over. And what's cool is like, you've had like the industry, other parts of the industry um, background, like like yeah. basically running businesses. Correct. And so that's what I think, you know, like you made your program so wonderful. And I met your entire staff and they're just wild and crazy and loving and so yeah. I love visiting you. I used to visit you so much. <laughs> yeah, pre-COVID. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I haven't visited anybody for a while. and But it's just been so fun. Um, your entire group, I wanted to kidnap and, uh, you know, and, and clone everybody <laughs> and put them in all these different school districts. Because <laughs> you guys work yeah. so well. So, like, yeah. I'm always curious, um, you know, what are, like, some of the things that you feel like are just difficult to you know in child nutrition that maybe we can get a little help from like I don't know is it the parents guardians can help us or teachers or anybody in the community um that will just help our program thrive more well I think it's all of those people mm -hmm. <laughs> you know I think uh the thing about school nutrition is is that it's kind of an unkept secret yeah. around school you know around the districts uh, in general Mm -hmm. um, we, we tend to be like on the other side of the campus, kind of tucked away in nutrition services and really not in the middle of the campuses where I think we really should be um, because nutrition is so important to, uh, you know, just every aspect of food services and we, we need to, to, to know that. So, you know, we need parents to help uh, support uh, students 
you know, with eating in school, uh, mm -hmm. there's a lot of misconception about school nutrition that, you know, probably goes back to the 60s or 70s about, you know, school food not being great. Right. There are a lot of programs that are doing a lot of really good food, a lot of really good uh, ideas that are, you're, you're seeing in food services across the country. Yeah. And you know, the parents can help, uh, the teachers can help, uh, definitely administrators and how they set up the schedules. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, in, in most of our schools, you know, kids have about 30 minutes to eat. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about, you know, if there's 3,000 kids on a campus and they all get out at the same time, it's, it's impossible to serve 3,000 kids at one time in 30 minutes. So just, exactly. you know, all of those working together. And then I think the USDA yeah. uh, really, really can help us. And, and let me first say, they have really helped us during COVID. Mm -hmm. You know, I the know. waivers that they've allowed us to, to, to operate under, you know, um, really big kudos to uh, Kim Frenzel and yes. the state of yes. California, yes. California Department of Education and, and her great team. You know, they've advocated for us. Oh, and yeah. So, um, but I think going forward, what would help um, is just, you know, streamlining some of the, you know, regulations and, mm -hmm. and some of the things that handicap manufacturers Mm -hmm. Also kind of tie the hands of, of, of our, our distributors. Yeah. And then also, you know, the same with the, the districts. And, and so I just think all of those people, you know, together, we, we can make our department super, super strong. I know. I love less paperwork, Eric. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of paperwork in child nutrition. <laughs> it, it is. That is true. And I feel like if we did like universal feeding, it would be like, like no more paperwork. Everybody feeds. Right. I don't know. That's one of my wishes. <laughs> so Eric, I was just thinking about, you know, all the stresses that child nutrition brings on and not even just that. It's just like COVID is here and things are happening. A freezer just all of a sudden stops working. Like, how do you stay chill? Like, you are always chill, though. That's the thing. Like, how do you do it? Well, I'll tell you. Um... One of the things that really, there's actually 27 people uh -huh. uh, that help me stay chill, right? Uh -huh. I have a, I have a, I have an awesome uh, area supervisor team, mm -hmm. you know, from Jonathan to Devin to Lisa to Bernice, and then all 23 oh, yeah. of the site managers, <laughs> you know, they just make it super easy. Yeah. My guy, Mike, and, and my warehouse and my office yeah. staff. Yeah they allow me to have the freedom to, to be able to stay chill, right? Yeah. So I don't have to um, freak out every time something happens because I empower them to make decisions, right? Exactly. So when you're at your site and there's something that happens, you don't have to call me and mm -hmm. ask me, hey, can I have permission to do X? This is an right. emergency and we need... No, you no. are hired... Uh, as a professional to go in and make those decisions, right? Yeah. So I empower them to do that. And by doing that, they, man, I'm, again, my team is awesome. They, yes, they, they, they calm it down. Uh, and, and that allows me to really think about, you know, the overall right. program, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, I used to work for the higher regency um, in Louisville, Kentucky many years, many years ago. And at the time, that little small Hyatt hotel mm -hmm. was the number one catering dollar generating hotel for all of Hyatt worldwide. So, I mean, we, yeah, we worked like crazy. We worked like crazy. But I had a general manager of the hotel that, you mm -hmm. know, would bring us in and have these talks with us. And, and one of our talks, he asked me, he's like, what kind of manager are you? Ooh. Are you a damager or are you a manager? And I, I was like, I didn't know what he was talking about. And so he explained to me the difference is that a damager is really all they do all day is run around putting their fingers in the dike or the mm -hmm. dam to stop the, the water from coming mm -hmm. through. Where the manager has uh, the time to really plan, to really yep. set forth the program yep. and then execute the program. Exactly. And so I try to operate in that, in that regard. Yeah. But again, it's, it's hiring people that help support that. Exactly. Uh, and so my, I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed. And it's not like I don't tell them that. So if they ever see this, they will know. I tell them this all the time, that they make my, 
my job and my life easier. And I'm really blessed to have the team that I have. And so um, I would say to any directors, hire, hire the right people. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't be afraid to hire people that are smarter than you. Yes. And, and then let them do their job. Right. Like, yes, let them go and do their job. And then the next step for me is how do I help them become, you know, whatever their goal is. Yes. Elevate. Exactly. Because when everyone like elevates themselves, wow, you just have like the dream team, basically yes. putting together like our own fabulous like NBA players, but we cherry pick all the, you know, super fab and everybody's got their own great skill set. Right. And yeah. so people who are willing to put in that work, but have the passion, the passion. Like I remember um, coming over to visit uh, Sweetwater in down, down near San Diego. You have the coolest chicken coop. Yes. You have, you're the only school that I knew back then that has their own chicken. And then you were telling me, I met your, the chicken lady, the fabulous chicken lady who like, you know, she's certified to take yeah. care of everything and she yeah. teaches the kids yes. how to do it. And, um, and then like, and then the whole program and then the hydroponics Yes. and the farming and like, just tell me a little bit about you guys like that. Yeah. Well, again, it's the connections, it's the connections of people. Right. And, and, and I'm really honored to be working in a district where there are people who care about the kids and yeah. how do we how do we introduce them to different things so yeah. uh, dr arias is actually the the, the the person who helped start that program mm -hmm. um and we work together to, to brainstorm it and, and get it going but dr arias is an engineer he's an yeah. engineer extraordinaire yeah. and he's training the kids so that farm everything that's built on the farm whether it's the greenhouse to the to to the chicken coops to the hydroponic uh, setup to now they have solar power all of that was set up by the students right so they built this whole facility um, and and that and they take care of the chickens so yeah, yeah you know uh, Miss Perez helps uh, you know guide them on what mm -hmm. to do but the kids actually take care of the chickens yeah. watching the chickens making sure they're fed. Um, you know, harvesting the eggs, washing yes. the eggs. So, you know, it's a, it's a really excellent program that uh, then we can take those eggs and then they go right into our food program. Perfect. So, you know, it's it's just, I, I mean, I love what I, I do and I love what I get an opportunity to do. And, and um, you know, I think it's fun when you can have fun at work, right? Oh, so, yeah. I know, because you don't even feel like you're working because you're just always having yeah. fun with everyone. Like your whole staff, I know, because I met everyone. So I'm curious. So, Eric, I have my magic wand from Harry Potter, and I ask everybody this question. So if um, I can, you know, give you this wand and you can make one wish, like anything, just like in for child nutrition or maybe the world, whatever, whatever. But the first, first wish, what would you like to do? Mm-hmm. Well, my first wish would be that COVID-19 went away. <laughs> that's, I know. That's my, that's my first wish uh, in, a, in, in the larger sense. Mm -hmm. I think my second wish um, is, is that we were able to feed every kid for free. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Like, like in the greatest country in, in the world, we should be able to do that. Exactly. You know? And when you think about the connections between what we do mm -hmm. and child nutrition, and this is something I think that, you know, our legislators, I think mm -hmm. that, our, you know, even from our local, you know, governments to our school boards mm -hmm. to even our parents don't understand how many actual jobs are created oh. that support food services, right? Yeah. So from... You know, the, the people who work in the cafeterias, right? Yes. Uh, to the people who distribute the product. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, for us here in California, Gold Star. And, yeah. You know, like great company, great great guys, you know, and, and, and ladies and guys, you know. Ladies and guys. Uh, they know what we mean. They know what we mean, right? But how many people they employ? Yes, so right? much. So many. And then, and then you and your company, right? I and make the many, food. <laughs> yeah, you make the food. And then how many people you employ? Oh, right? so many. 
And then the ingredients that go into the food that you make, how many yes. people do they import, right? Yes. So when you think you about should. how child nutrition actually touches every economic mm -hmm. point in the country, yeah. how great it would be if we can continue to expand that. Yes. And if districts had to, you know, really uh, concentrate on the quality of the food yes, and, and not so much worrying about how to, you know, uh, take a nickel out of every dollar mm -hmm. to, to be able to put back into your, into your coffers so that you can buy equipment, for example, and things like that, which then create, that's a whole nother industry that yeah. supports nutrition services. So I think that, you know, by understanding the, the way that the economy works, Mm -hmm. I go ahead and diverting a little bit of that money to, you know, the money that would be needed to provide that for every student, no matter what economic uh, background that they have, uh, to be able to provide quality meals. And then understanding that food and great nutrition supports what? The mission, education. You know, we create a healthier country. We create healthier kids. Yes. Um, you know, it's just you know, we can change the world. That's just me. And that's how I think about what I do on a daily basis is making sure that it's real food for real kids. And then they are able to then, you know, go out and go, go, go make something happen in the world, you know, yeah. and, and feel good about it. And on, a good about well, on a full cause, belly. Cause I know that I get a little hangry when I don't have my food on and it's like, uh, I, I can't function as well. That, that is very true. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I can't even imagine as a kid, like not being able to have the access to food, um, you know, especially if I'm going to school, it, it would just, I just see it as such a no brainer, you know, it's so just, it's logical, right? To mm -hmm. have breakfast, lunch, din uh, supper, snack as well, like all of it, keep them fed. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think, I think Winnie that, you know, we as directors have to really promote that with our staff right mm -hmm. you know because you know there's you know the whole you know we're you and you're what you're doing and reimagining the, the lunch lady um you know and how the the professionals that they are uh, but you know there's also those images that kids have about you know people not being very nice and so yeah. one of the things that you know we we do here is every hire the, every person that comes into whether a substitute, new hire, mm -hmm. we emphasize customer service training. Yes. And we talk about, you know, the mission of our department. And the mission of our department is to feed every kid yep. a really healthy, great meal. With, With a smile, right? Yeah. Because here's the thing, you know, you don't know if you're the first person that kid sees in the morning outside of leaving home, mm -hmm. you don't know what, what that kid left at home or mm -hmm. even if that kid had a home. And so when that kid sees you 7.30 in the morning for breakfast, oh yeah, how nice it is to smile and say, hey, how are you today? How are you doing yeah. today? What can I get you? You know, and that, those are the things that we emphasize that we treat our kids like our kids. Yes. You know, and that's how we have to, to understand that, you know, I don't care where you come from. Yep. You know, we, have, we have beautiful kids that need support and they need love. And, and that's what I think in our department, we should be able to provide that. I love uh, it. I know you do. I know your yeah, whole like team. I'm a, yeah, I'm a stickler for that. Uh, I just believe in, in certain businesses, if you don't uh, really fit that, you probably are in the wrong line of work. Yeah. And, and, and I, w I always say to my sisters and brothers that are in child nutrition that may have not, don't have that fire like the way we do it's okay just that means it's okay to move to another industry that yeah. may not need that and but yeah. what we really do need for our child nutrition folks to be in our village you know we're all villagers a part of this huge village of feeding kids we need you to have that fire like the like that song this girl is on fire like <laughs> you know like it's got to be in there because that's what will get them through all the craziness, right? That happens in the kitchen. I know, like, oh my God, the food truck didn't come. Ah, I need, it's on the menu, but I don't have the food. And, you know, for them to 
not give up. They're like, no, it's okay. We got this. We're going to get the kid. You know, like they got that passion. And, yeah. and I, I always want, you know, sisters and brothers out there um, and directors. I met um, admin. I met a uh, superintendent. I met everybody top to bottom. Um, if you don't have it anymore in you, mm -hmm. it's okay. We still love you. It's yeah. just, it's okay to move on to another industry. And we will keep praying for you and blessing you and give, sending you our love and light. Uh, but make room for somebody to come in that have the that crazy passion. Like, we're just crazy. Look at us. We're just crazy. <laughs> no. but here's, the, here's the thing, though, right? Like, I, I think that we, we have to think about this. I don't care what industry you're in. You know, you could be making widgets, right? I know. If you're, if you're working in, a, in any job, there's, there's a level of self-pride and self-care of whatever you're doing. No, I get you. And, and so um, one, of, one of my former chefs, you know, we were, we were you know, talking and, 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 you know, I was trying to really figure out if I wanted to stay in, in food services. Mm -hmm. and, and he asked me, he's like, well, what would you do if you had to do it, if you can do it for free? Uh-huh. What, what what would that be? Yes. And I thought about it. I was like, yeah, probably food services, you know, yeah. I'm, because I love it. I yeah. mean, I, I've worked, you know, I've worked every job that you can imagine. I've washed, you know, bathrooms. I've cleaned toilets. I've mopped floors. I've, you know, peeled 50-pound bags of potatoes. I've done everything that you could probably think of, which are dirty jobs in restaurants. I did those jobs. Yeah. So I know what it's like to do them, but in every one of them, I knew that that was a step forward for me mm -hmm. to get somewhere else. It wasn't mm -hmm. where I was just going to end. And I think that no matter what we do, uh, just as people, you know, if we can have something within us that helps yes. motivate us yes. to be good people in what we do, yes. it carries across whatever industry, you know? Exactly. Yeah whatever it is and so i'm so glad you said it brother because i didn't want people to think you know mama chang is saying leave us no that's not what i mean and thank god you clarify for me because yeah. you get what i'm trying to say is i want them to be in the industry of their passion yes like i've always been that way right find your passion like what is your calling what is it that you want to do on this earth before you pass what's your yeah. legacy and if it's not feeding kids like the way we are if you love making um, apps and programs, yes, do it. Maybe Absolutely. you can help us, Child Nutrition, and make amazing apps too. So we, I, I would love, you know, like a, uh, what is it, the app where kids can actually say which, what they want for their lunch. And then mm -hmm. there's some kind of crazy way of labor that would, you know, make it super easy and efficient to make all that food before the kids get their lunch because they already selected what they wanted. This mm -hmm. is just like my crazy futuristic, you know, thoughts. Like one yeah. day it would be easy and not hard on the staff because they already have to do so much. So it's finding the efficient way of how to do it. I know it's out there. We're not there yet. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. coming. Somebody yeah. is going to help us figure it out. Where it's like, oh, wow. The staff don't have to work as hard. They actually actually have more breaks. But they the kids get to pick their own food. like, And it's super fast, efficient, done. And everybody is less stressed. And then that whole 30 minutes, you were saying that they get their lunch break because they have to line up. Then they get the food. Then they have to eat. That's not enough time for digestion. In, yeah. in my understanding, when I study you know, nutrition... And so it would be nice, I think, to leave time to digest <laughs> and not rush eating. But, you know, like I, I understand um, uh, scheduling is, is a bigger, bigger, um, mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, like there's so much more to it. And I get it. Um, so it's nice to keep talking about it and figuring it out. Absolutely. Right. And we'll get there. I think the more we, um, uh, you know, child nutrition itself and organizations that rep our, our, our field, you know, are talking about those things, you know, so there, there's are. some initiatives to, to happen, you know, because, you know, when you think about socialization, right, where a lot of great conversations and learning happens over breaking bread yeah. in, every, in every culture, you know, yeah. it's, it's you sit down, you have a meal and 
and you get a chance to kind of unwind and talk. And so uh, being able to, to honor that and value that in the school day for the yep. kids, you know, and I think it's coming as more um, educators become, you know, aware of, you know, there's a lot more uh, to the whole process of Ooh, educating yeah. a child than just, you know, just the right, right, right. Specialization as well. Exactly. So yeah. I, like, is I'm curious, is there anything that you want to say, you know, to like the parents and guardians out here that, you know, maybe watching and, and that's in San Diego area just to how they can maybe help us out or um, anything you want to say like to them? Yeah, I just say, you know, um, come and check out the, uh, come, come and check out the, the, the department, you know, like for me, a parent, a call and, and, and have an issue or something. And first thing I ask is, hey, why don't you come in and see one of the cafeterias? Yes. You know, let's go on a tour. Let's talk about it. Yes. Uh, let's see, you know, this is what we actually do. And what I found is that when I start engaging directly with parents, uh -huh. they get the chance to really know what we're doing. You know, it's, it's funny because it's always like, you know, and I use his name as just a, a, a anonymous name, but you know, Johnny never told me that this was what kind of food you were serving. Right? Exactly. And so they don't really know. And, and they, you know, so I just say to parents, check us out. Just don't read what's on the menu. Come and actually have lunch. Yeah. Come in, you know, talk to the director or talk to the supervisor at the site or manager at the site. Come and tour, you know, for me, come and tour our chicken farm, man. Like, yeah, that was so much fun. Let's see, let's see I have both. videos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Come and do that. Like that, then you get what we're trying to do and you get that we care about your kid. And, you know, we, we're, we're, you know, operating in the parameters USDA uh, yep. has for us. Yeah. Um, and then I say to them, too, think about if you were to go to any restaurant and there was, mm -hmm. let's just say, 100 people in the restaurant and how long it would take you to get fed. <laughs> and, and then imagine there's 3,000 kids <laughs> and, and what that, that process is like. It's, it's, it, it's not easy. And, and we have some professional ladies and, men, and, and gentlemen that oh, work in these departments that work hard. You know, they work hard. Wedding. Uh, yes. And, and they're great people and they care about kids and they care about what they're doing. So, you know, get to know them. That's, that's what I would say. Yay! I love it, brother. You are one of my most uh, inspiring people of all time. And I thank you thank so you. much for talking and sharing your story. Um, you. So I, we're going to have to do another one because I want us to, like, show off your singing abilities. <laughs> uh i know <laughs> you see you think i forgot uh-huh now i want everybody to know you have an awesome voice um Nobody but you gotta, you, you're supposed to text me and tell me what song you want me to prepare so i can practice yeah it's called the no song <laughs> the no song if i google yeah, that I am I gonna sing. find nothing <laughs> All right, fine, fine. <laughs> well, I'll just, you know, when when uh, things open up, I'm going to make another trip come down. I miss you guys. I miss seeing you. I miss the Same team, here. the chicken coop, and I want to see the solar panels. Oh, That's yeah. so new. Yeah. And awesome. then, we'll, and I mean, you guys, Um, actually, uh, the second uh, school that I did the documentary filming of, yes. and what was cool was that you um, had your high school film students and yeah. the film teacher be on set, and I call it set, but meaning the kitchen, and um, our fabulous team uh, in one of the schools uh, participated and talked about food and the process, and so that documentary, cross your fingers, we're going to get it over to Netflix, got to get that trailer going, so I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll call you later about it. Sounds but, good. Yay! Thank you. Have fun this winter break. Please enjoy and you please too. rest up, brother. Oh, okay. I am. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.